Are you struggling to stand out in a crowded market? Do you feel lost in a sea of competition? It's time to build a brand that stands out. I'm Corey Hibben, and on a recent trip to New York City, I discovered three secrets to building an unforgettable brand. Let's dive in. Number one is clarity. So while walking the streets in New York City, I couldn't help but feel like I was in a giant strip mall. There was an endless sea of stores and shops and delis, which side note, if you don't know what a deli is, they're actually amazing. It's kind of like the gas station of New York City because there's really no gas stations around, but delis are super cool. But generally speaking, where I'm going with this is that there is just so many businesses and shops and food trucks and ice cream stands, and there's just a ton of competition all around New York City. And so it got me wondering, how does anybody stand out? And the short answer is that most of them don't. They all honestly kind of look the same, but the ones that have figured out how to differentiate themselves are literally crushing it. Let's take bagel shops, for example. There are a ton of bagel shops all around New York City, and they are known for having some of the best bagels in the entire world. I'm told that something about their water, apparently they have really clean or good water for making bagels. I don't actually believe that's true, to be honest. I think that they just make more bagels than anybody else, so they've gotten better at making bagels than anybody else that makes bagels. Kind of like a barbecue city that's really good at barbecue. Well, it's probably because they have so so many people making barbecue that the best ones rise to the top. I'm not here to argue with a New Yorker whether it's the water or it's how many bagels they made, but for whatever reason, they do have incredible bagels. And we could have gone to any old shop or even really any old deli to get a bagel, but we actually went to a very particular bagel shop. It is called Tompkins Square Bagels. And to be honest, the reason that we went there is because of their branding. Here are a few things that stood out. Number one, their logo is literally a bagel. Number two, their name has bagel in it, which is helpful. Number three, their Instagram is all photos and videos of incredible looking bagels. And number four is if you go to their Google business profile, they have an endless list of reviews of people talking about how great their bagels are. And at the core of all this is just really strong branding is that they've made it clear that they are the bagel shop to go to in town. And they have figured out how to stand out by being very clear what they do. They sell bagels. And as a little side note, it is actually definitely one of the best bagels I've ever had. I don't know if it's the water or it's how they make bagels, but it was incredible. Highly recommend going to Tompkins Square Bagels. But here are the three things you can do to apply this to your own business. Number one is to find what makes you unique. So Tompkins Square Bagels actually has a lot of fish options, like smoked salmon and those sort of options, and a ton of cream cheese. And I will say that is one thing that makes them very unique, is that they have a lot more, I guess, quote unquote, seafood type options for their bagels. Number two is to tell a story. If you look at the website on Tompkins Bagels, they have a really great founder story of a guy that's from New York and how he started this business by working at a different bagel shop and decided to start his own bagel shop and make it the best bagel shop in the whole world. Very, very cool story. And number three is to share it often. Talk about what you're doing. They are all over Instagram and different social media platforms of talking about the incredible bagels and what people are saying about them. And those are the three things that I would do to create more clarity about your brand. Like I said, everything from a branding standpoint that they have done has been around, we are the bagel shop. And one of my favorite marketing quotes to drive this home is that clarity beats clever and less clever is clear. And so the moral of that is just be very crystal clear about what you do, who you help and what you offer. All right, the second thing you need to understand to building a strong brand is consistency. And I know this word is very trite, but honestly, when it comes to branding, I can't tell you how important it is. Most brands talk about too many different things and take too many different angles and ideas and points of view on certain topics and it becomes scattered and confusing. It is already hard enough to cut through the noise and by talking about multiple things and not saying consistent and true to what you believe and what your values are, makes it very hard for anybody else to understand what it is you do and ultimately to latch on to your brand. You see, most brands are about as inconsistent as the New York City subway schedule and if you've ever been to New York, you know exactly what I'm talking about because it seems like they are doing construction on all different parts of the subway at any given time. So you're never really sure where the subway is going to take you. The funny thing is I actually have a client that lives in New York and she warned me about the subway system, but apparently I'm a have to put your hand on the fire type of person and missed a few trains before I really figured it out. But yeah, it's not super reliable. So if I was looking for branding advice, I would not go to the subway team. Where I would go though is the Empire State Building team. And here's why. It is instantly recognizable, it has consistent lighting, and it is a timeless design. In other words, it is very consistent. No matter where you are in New York City, you can instantly recognize the Empire State Building. And this is the same thing that you want with your brand as well. Here are the three ways to apply this to your own business. Number one, define your brand guidelines. This is basically like the red tape or the guidelines of what you should or should not, more importantly, be talking about. You want to stay within those guidelines to make it very clear of who you are, what you stand for, and what your values are. The second thing you want to consider is that those brand guidelines stay true throughout all touch points. No matter what social media platforms you're on, no matter if you're doing 
different emails or YouTube videos or podcast shows or how you engage with your customers on a day in and day out basis. You want to make sure that those touch points are all the exact same so people know exactly what they can get from you. If you're more on the funny side, try to keep the majority of the things that you do funny. If you're on the more serious side, try to keep it more serious. But really where I'm going with this is just make sure that all the touch points in the journey of somebody that's never heard from you to ultimately working with you gets that same experience and they know what they can expect from you, kind of like the Empire State Building. And then the third thing I would consider is to audit this regularly, to look at your social media pages, your messages, your client journeys, how you're working with people. As long as that process continues to stay the same, then this audit won't be as necessary as often. But doing a regular brand audit can honestly be really helpful of seeing where the leak points might be. But if you're in the fitness space and all of a sudden you start gravitating towards healthcare topics, that can actually be more damaging to a brand than it can be good for a brand. So just make sure you're staying within those guidelines and being as consistent as possible across all touch points. All right, the third thing to building a strong brand is to understand connection. If you are treating customers like a transaction, you are making a massive mistake. Like I mentioned before, one of my clients happens to live in New York, Brooklyn to be specific. And so before ever even flying out to New York, I made sure that I put something in the schedule to connect with them. No agenda, didn't have to be business related. There was no ulterior motive. It was purely just an opportunity to connect with one of my clients and to really foster and build that relationship. We met at one of the local coffee shops in downtown New York. And the cool thing was actually she gave me all sorts of cool insights about New York City in general of places to go and places to avoid. And it was really helpful to get a better understanding of somebody that's lived there their entire life of like what the good and bad places are to go. But here's my point. The brands that ultimately stand out, whether it's New York City or otherwise, they understand the importance of human connection and hospitality. 11 Madison Park is a restaurant in New York and it was rated the best restaurant in the world. And here's the crazy thing is that it wasn't actually necessarily because of their food. Yes, of course they had really good food, but it was because of their over the top hospitality that they provided to their customers. They provided a unique experience that they couldn't get anywhere else because they just made people feel special when they showed up to the restaurant. And that's how they were able to stand out. Not necessarily just the service, but the hospitality that they provide. There's actually a great book about this called Unreasonable Hospitality. I highly recommend recommend reading it. But one of the things that he talks about is about the difference between a service and being hospital is that a service is black and white. Hospitality is color. Anybody can create a really good dish and to deliver that dish on time and to put it in front of a customer. But it's the magic that happens of engaging with this customer, making them feel special, doing something unique and different that's maybe feels unscalable, but the unscalability is actually what makes a business continue to grow and thrive. But here's how you can apply this to your own business. Number one, humanize your brand. Here's the crazy thing is that big corporate companies are trying to be like small personable businesses. Well, for whatever reason, small businesses try to be like these big corporate brands. And the reality is, is that everybody wants to be connected to the brand or the business that they're working with. So if you are one of those small businesses, stop being so serious and corporate -y. Be more human, create videos on your website, show the behind the scenes, talk to customers, just be more human. The second thing I'd consider for your brand is to make it very welcoming and friendly and personable. Kind of like that first point is just to really make it more human. And the third thing I would consider is to go the extra mile and understand the difference between a service and being hospital is that a service is just doing the thing that you said you're going to do versus hospitality is really going above and beyond to making somebody feel special and seen and understood. The best businesses build bridges and connections, not just transactions. And so here's a final recap and take home point of those three things that we just talked about is number one is make it crystal clear of what you do and who you do it for, kind of like Tompkins Bagels. Number two is to maintain a cohesive brand across all touch points is to make sure you understand your brand guidelines and to stay within those at all times as much as possible. And the third thing to consider is that connections create loyalty. Be as human as you possibly can and try to go the above and beyond and create the extra mile for your customers. I hope this video has helped you build a better brand for yourself. If you want to connect more, I'm most active on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, to be honest. Otherwise, my main job is to help health brands with their marketing. If that's you, I'd love to connect. All right, guys. Peace.